Yes, mom. Okay. In the last class, we guys have discussed about major portion of major portion of protection. Lightning protection, surge protection, array protection, subarray protection. Is it? So how exactly we have to say yes, if the fault protection is required or not by seeing the calculation of the model which is given by the company. Then also you can say yes, we need a protection. We don't want a protection. So this is one of the best example which has shown in terms of uh, modules. So then we discussed about the mechanical protection and array protection and subarray protection. So next, other than that, we are moving with still more a small bit of a segment called extra low voltage segmentation. Extra low voltage, of course, we know that there is a higher level and lower level. But your PV array sometimes when the atmosphere or the temperature is not supportive, but still with the less irradiance also, the PV cells are in a position to produce the output. So in that cases, how exactly the model has to be considered. So in that case, we are talking about extra low voltage segmentation. So another reason for dividing arrays into separate may be so that the model string can be broken into extra low voltage segmentation. So if you consider any of the polarized circuits, the each component will receive different kind of inputs. Like someone required just two volts, some required 3.4 volts, some required five, six, 12. So variations will be there. But the input, if you are getting is 230. And your that voltage will be stepped down and it will be have a voltage regulator to give the exact value for each component. Similar way here also, people are going for continuous module. That is also fine. If they made sub arrays, instead of one complete segment, they are making three to four sub arrays. So each will going to give the output. Means depending upon the range of out, uh, voltage, we are making one big and another two are small. Means small applications and big applications, you can divide there itself. So in that case, most PV operate with their low with their voltage in the range of 120 to 500 volt DC. Means the range of the PV panels. They are given the DC in terms of 120 to 500. So you can assume it here. This is the minimum and this is the maximum value. So it may be desirable to split the array into extra low voltage sub arrays with open circuit voltage of less than 120 volt. Means normal array construction. We assume uh, the output can be of 120 to 500. Mean between that, you are expecting the output. But in the cases when it is not possible to achieve 120 also, so what you'll do, you'll split the array into subarray, subarray divisions where it can assess for extra low voltage segmentation, which is less than 120 volt. Why? In order to make the array safer and to reduce the risk of electrocution. So in this sense, Sometimes it is producing a very less and that is not a uh, waste energy. We can use it because 120, less than 120 means, of course, 150, 80 for small electronic devices and all that is enough for us. So we can operate. So that's what to safeguard. And at the same time, to utilize the energy, we can go for this electro, sorry, extra low voltage segmentation. So in the case of national course, generally addresses ELV segmentation. So they are given for that also one of the standard case. So in Australia or New Zealand, see these are the two countries that they are considering for all the segmentation verification, extra low voltage or maybe your uh, cases of uh, lighting arrestor, surge arrestor, mechanical production. So they are considering these places where you have a 2005 that is ELV arrays do not require fault current protection or disconnection devices on individual string. Whereas LV, arrays must have a suitable method for disconnecting into ELV segments. Of course, the same as a transformer, you will have LV side and HV side. 120 will act as LV side and 500 will act as a HV side. So for these cases, we need to have a connectors. That is like DC cable and AC cable. At the same time, I need to have a isolators also. DC isolator and AC isolators or disconnectors. But here they are saying as per the calculation, so this extra low voltage segment, they don't want a fault current protection because of course we are setting the standard of rating. Uh, just a minute. 
Can you see the slide? No, ma'am. Slide off, no? Just Okay, hope you can see it. So as per our standard calculation, see you're considering the main range as 120 to 500. And you will set the rating, like the highest rating of a current also. So lower voltage, definitely it will be operated within the healthy operation. So that's what we can say. There is no need of any extra protecting devices because your LV side, that is 120 volt side, whatever the dislocator or disconnector if you are connecting, that will going to safeguard the systems which is below that also. Low voltage and extra voltage segment will be protected from this 120 volt value. That is nothing but LV array must have a suitable method. So here we are going to consider, but not required for your ELV because ELV comes after your LV. So LV itself, it is, has a huge ranges like 5 amps, 2 amps, 3 amps. It's fixed. Because extra low voltage means your current will be less than that 1 amps, 0 0.5. So definitely it will not harm much. But in the case, if it continues to reach the LV, then LV should have a proper disconnector or proper protection system. So this is for uh, safeguarding or utilizing the minimum energy in a PV system. So next is sizing of a PV array. So sizing here again, we are uh, merging all the concept. Here we are talking about inverter, we are talking about cables, DC cable, AC cable, voltage sizing, current sizing, everything again we are meshing up with this concept called sizing a PV system. Okay, I will just read out first. So in general, an inverter should be chosen so that the maximum power output from the designed PV array matches the Inverter maximum array output. Definitely right. When you say inverter, it will receive the input from a PV. PV output will act as an input. And next, inverter maximum should match up with the array output. So in the case, you have to think in both the ways where there should not be a mismatch. If it is mismatch, what will happen? Your device will not ready to accept anything. Nothing will be going to happen. You cannot say the process is happening or you are getting an output. So it will be break will happen if you find the mismatch input side or output side where they are connected to the system. So that's what they say, selecting an inverter with a power input that is larger than the array output is known as oversizing and should be avoided as it reduces the inverter operating efficiency and hence reduces overall power output. This is like over smartness. Over smartness means here, you know the capacity, what can be the output of PV panel because you people are planning it, how many modules are you are placing it, how much DC voltage you are getting it, and after converting, how much AC you are getting it, everything you are knowing it before installing itself. So, in that case, you have to choose the proper inverter. Proper inverter means let us assume your rating of current is 4.5 you are getting. So, you choose the re inverter rating of 5 amps. Why you have to go for 10 amps? So, same as your meters when you are measuring. You will get a knobs like common terminal will be there, 5 amps knob or 10 amps knob will be there. And you know that the current flowing through that below 5 amps, then why you are connecting that to the 10 amps? Of course, you are feeling difficulty in finding the scale. There will be very, very small scale will be available. Then you have to determine. If you do it for 5, it will be easily available, right? Means accuracy of the system will go down. So that's what they say. Instead of selecting a proper one, if you choose a higher sizing of an inverter, that will reduces the operating efficiency and of course the overall output and you are investing more also cost will be more and output efficiency will be less because uh, whatever is required try to manage within that why you are going for higher range that is the first case second one the inverter actual operating efficiency should be as high as possible and this is described that the point where the power of the pv array is matched as closely as possible to the inverter rating in the watch means your PV module, we say this module is capable of producing one watt of power. Similarly, your inverter, whatever you choose also, it should be one watt capacity. So in that what happens, you can have achieve the proper conversion of DC to AC and equal rating of output you can expect in continuous process. The closer these two factors are to each other, the higher efficiency will be. Okay. It is not enough that the inverter operating efficiency is as high as possible. 
and the designer needs to ensure that the inverter and the PV array match in terms of voltage, current, and power to ensure the safe and efficient PV system. I think here simply they elaborated the concept here. We already know the term called paralleling or synchronization of a system. Normally, generator will be synchronized with a grid system. So we say these terms should be matched up. The voltage, current, I think here they're not speak about frequency because we have a DC and AC. So I cannot also speak about DC, the sorry, frequency. But other than that, you are going to match up with both of the PV module and the inverter considering voltage, current, and the power. So it will say uh, inverter is working efficiently at the same time PV system is also working efficiently. <laughs> And then system sizing is often done using computer programs such as see we have done uh, seen so many software programs like uh, SQL and all. let's see these are all like old concept itself SQL but now it has been changed with the technology so but the basic calculation need to be understood so minimum calculation of short circuit current open circuit uh, uh, voltage and uh, what is the minimum capacity of models can be fit into that all these things has to be considered before doing it minimum manual calculation then programming of course we are feeding in the